Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back. I told you we'd come back, and we came back. Here it is, Tuesday at 1 o'clock block with Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. And one case at a time, we are learning about how tax works in this state. This is very important. We understand this. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for having me back. So last time we talked about the Kahiawa Wind Farm Assessment, which is very interesting. And let me think. That's pending, huh? It is. That's pending in the, what, state Supreme Court. That's correct. And not yet resolved. Sometimes it takes a while. And that has gonna, that's going to have an effect on energy because the question is whether wind turbines are included in, in real property for real property tax assessments. It could have an effect all over the state on wind. Hmm? That's right. And who knows what else. But there's another one also emanating out of, out of Maui. Maui is pretty active in the tax appeal court, I think. <laughs> so far. And this one is called um, <clears throat> The Appeal of Ocean Resort Villas. And that's been kicking around for a while, but that's also of significant importance. Can you state the case, Tom? Yeah, so uh, a few years ago, uh, you know, effective 2006, the county of Maui enacted a separate real property tax classification for timeshares. So there used to be, you know, ocean res um, hotel and resort would apply to hotels and timeshares and uh, B and B's and you know anything with transient accommodations, but they did a separate classification uh, effective in 2006. The the ordinance happened in 2004, uh, setting up timeshare as a separate class and one that was taxed much higher. Why? Uh, the the reasoning of the county at the time was well, at, now, at, now at the time you realize. They were getting a piece of the transient accommodations tax. Okay, they were getting about ten percent. Uh, so uh, they looked at uh, hotel rooms and they looked at timeshares, and because of the way they were getting uh, the tax calculated, they were getting a lot less money from timeshares than they were from uh, other kinds of hotel uh, or, or other kinds of transient accommodations. And and and, th and that troubled them because. A, it's still kind of a hotel operation, but B, timeshares are, what, not as attractive to the development of the state, tourist industry, housing, hot the hotel industry as regular hotel rooms because they're, they come and go. I mean, there's a bias against timeshares, right? Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there is. It seems to be. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the bias is from, but you know, it's just kind of a different way to, uh, you know, to hold the the realty. And and you know, one thing that you need to realize is that, you know, timeshares uh, are realty. They're they're real. They're, it's a recognized form of, I don't want to say security, but a recognized form of real property interest. Yeah, you got a deed. And in, there were a lot of timeshare plans. There were a lot of misadventures at the beginning. You know, it was during our time. You know, practicing. Misadventures where you know scammers were involved and scam deals were there and people. Yeah, I think that may have created it. a lot of the bias. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. And so over time, though, it got to be accepted. Over time, we have people who uh, you know who are responsible property owners coming here on a regular basis, and it keeps them coming. I, mean, I have a friend who goes out to, uh, you know, what's that uh, um, out there near the Disney area there. Uh, every year, he has a unit or a part of a unit there, and he has a wonderful time with his family. And he could probably afford, he could probably afford to buy a condo out there and make that his vacation home, but it's, it works better for him as timeshare. So really, when you shake it and bake it, timeshare, you know, it's part of the firmament now, the way it is, not only in Hawaii, but elsewhere at destination resorts. That's right. So in this particular case, uh, the, the timeshares have a you know, timeshare association. So Ocean Resort Villas uh, is a timeshare association. So you, you get a, you know, a bunch of people who own, who own units in this building. And then you have uh, ORV North, Ocean Resort Villas North, which is another building in the same general vicinity. And they said, well, you know, this, this timeshare classification doesn't make us happy. So they sued to invalidate it. So they, validate the classification. Yeah, so they, so they marched down to 
uh, Second Circuit Court, which is our general court in Maui. Maui. And, and they said, you know, court, please, you know, strike this down. Okay. And, um, uh, of course, that made the county unhappy. And so, uh, but, but then what they but did... Can I ask you, though? Sure. On what basis did they seek to set aside that classification? Well, well primarily, uh, they also, um, uh, you know, launched constitutional arguments, um, but... But the primary one, and, and the, the one that the, uh, the Second Circuit judge eventually bought, uh, was that there's, uh, you know, the classification ordinance uh, says that, you know, you, you um, break down these uh, properties into these various classes, and it lists all the classes, uh, upon consideration of highest and best use. So, uh, and, and they said, well, timeshare, as you defined it, uh, has nothing to do with use, so That's uh, interesting. so this is this is inconsistent. And and uh, the people who challenged uh, the um, residential A ordinance here in Honolulu, the classification, were were saying the same thing. They were, they were saying you know real property classification is supposed to be based on use, and uh, you know Res A is based on valuation, so it's not based on use and should be thrown out. So that's, it's, it's kind of a variation of the same Where market. does this come from, the notion that, it, that the difference in classifications has to be based on a difference in use? Where does that come from? It comes from the wording of the ordinance. Uh, again, it, it starts off by so saying... So the, the, the argument they made is that the ordinance itself is intrinsically inconsistent, that it doesn't follow its own rules. Is that what it is? Uh, something like that. Yeah. yeah I mean, they, they, they made the, the argument that... Um, uh, it conflicted with the rest of the ordinance, and 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 therefore, you know, it was it was it was wrong. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, so, but then the, the more interesting thing is uh, when 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 the county government kind of got got a you know look at it, then they then they kind of looked back at the property and they said, well, um, it's very interesting because. Uh, here the suit was filed in 2013, and she is, isn't it a shame because, because in 2006, 7, and 8, uh, we didn't tax the property, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the property uh, for enough. Uh, and what, what I mean by that is uh, they had taxed it under the cost approach, which is typically what you use when you value a, a, um, a condo building that's being constructed. The original cost. Right. Of the unit to the buyer. Right. Uh, and then they said they should have been, been um, taxing them at fair market value. So, so, the, so the county attorneys came up with this, this idea of, oh, um, well, uh, what we did was we taxed the master parcels. We didn't tax the individual units. So we are going to tax the individual units now. Isn't that a double tax on the same real property? Uh, no, because they they, um, uh, they they gave the intervals credit for the tax that was paid by the master parcel. Okay. Okay. And and they uh, and they did it under this statutory scheme uh, that says if um, there is omitted property, you know, property that is omitted from the, the assessment rules, that can be added at any time. Okay. And uh, and in the Kahiava case. The, the assessments did, in fact, go back a few years. Uh, the, uh, uh, the wind power companies challenged that, and they said no. I mean, the, 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 the uh, Intermediate Court of Appeals said no, it was omitted property. Because previous to uh, them building their windmills, it was state land. No tax was paid on because the state doesn't pay property tax. Uh, and then once they leased uh, from, from the state, then it became subject to real property tax. But the, you know, the, the, the county didn't get around to assessing it for a couple of years. But you know, that's how the ordinance works. So it may, it may look on the surface like it's retroactive tax, but it really... Well, it is retroactive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but, that, that, but, it, but it's okay, because the, the ordinance provides for it. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So, so that theory is what the county of Maui used to, to basically nail these guys, the, the people who had the temerity, you know, to go sue them 
because uh, 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 because of this, <laughs> these specious arguments about real property tax classification. Um, <laughs> they sound like payback. <laughs> That's what the judge found. Retributive, a retributive assessment. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Oh my goodness! <laughs> because, because, uh, so, so, um, let me just kind of give you some of the further details. So, so they, they basically um, came up with these assessments, and they, they kind of like plopped them all on the association. They said, "All right, fine, ten million dollars, <laughs> we'll please." Fix your wagon. Ten million dollars, please, and you have to pay in thirty days. <laughs> no, that's downright mean. <laughs> and if you don't pay, we, we foreclose. We foreclose your unit. <laughs> which they, which they had the power to do. Which they had the power to do. <laughs> okay, so so um, uh, you know, being you know, having good lawyers, they they basically amended their complaint to say, and oh, by the way. This is this is what the county did to us. So second amended complaint, you know, including this, you know, these charges. Bring of, it in front of the judge altogether. Yeah, let's bring it out. All, all, and, and 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 even another wrinkle to the story was was this. Um, people in other parts of Maui were, were were concerned when they heard about these retroactive assessments. And uh, and they and they basically went and asked asked the county, well, what's going to happen to us? Ah. And the county said nothing. Ooh. And and, the, and it, this was in writing. Uh, and the county said basically, you know, we, we we have a beef with these guys because they sued us, claiming all these specious things, and 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 they haven't paid their fair share in prior yeah. years. Yeah. Don't mind us. We're just doing retribution on on a few guys that have offended us. <laughs> it's personal. <laughs> It was very personal. That's exactly what it was. That's not only mean, it's illegal. <laughs> they got the mark of unfairness all over it. Well, in the, writing. <laughs> that, that plus, they, 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 they've denied the association civil rights. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Okay, because. Um, and you may you may remember this from law school. There there is uh, this federal statute dating back to the 1870s. 1983. Yes, 42 U.S.C. 1983. And what that basically says is that if you, acting under color of state law, deny somebody their federal constitutional rights, then you can get sued for for damages, attorneys' fees. You know. Even if you're a government. Yeah. Especially if you're a government, <laughs> okay? Because because you're not supposed to be denying people federally protected constitutional rights. Yeah. Well, this Even is, if this you is are. really really getting interesting, and it's a perfect time, Tom, for us to take a break, because it's a cliffhanger. What's going to happen with all these arguments of this gross unfairness? And already we're talking about civil rights and and uh, and Section 1983, which is powerful stuff. When we come back from this break, you're going to find out from Tom Yamachika, president of the, of the Hawaii Tax Foundation. No ka'oi, eh? <laughs> hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. I can hardly wait to get back 
with Tom Yamachika, president of the Hawaii Tax Foundation. Okay, and um, we're talking about the tax appeal of the ocean resort villas, and we're talking about it kind of in a context that's against the Kahiawa wind, uh, wind uh, farm uh, tax appeal we talked about last time. They should be seen together. They, they, they both kind of work with each other because, as Tom mentioned to me during the break, that the Corporation Council of the County of Maui was the same person for both of these tax appeals. And, and I said to him just going out, I said, no ka'oi. And the Wild West in Maui, if you thought the Wild West was west of here, it's actually east of here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so here we are with all these arguments formed up and the possibility of a, you know, a, a dreaded civil rights claim under 1983. What happens? Well, so all of this goes before the judge. And, and the judge is not happy. <laughs> he shouldn't have been. <laughs> the judge is not happy. Uh, and what he basically rules was, you know, number one, uh, that, I mean, and, and, and at this point, um, you know, I, I think the, the county of Maui kind of felt the tide kind of turning against him. Uh, so, so he, <laughs> A little he, squeamish then? <laughs> yeah, so he started arguing that the court didn't have jurisdiction. Oh. Which is, which is very interesting because normally in tax appeals, there is a specialized court called the tax appeal court. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you appeal from an assessment and the appeal goes to tax appeal court. Yeah. Okay, uh, but this was and that's a statewide court, right? Right. Or is that in, in statewide? Only, so the, and and so you find a different tax appeal court in each uh, circuit. Is that right? No, no, it's it's just one. Just one, uh, and we know this one that meets all the time here in Honolulu. That's right. Does the one in Honolulu meet on other islands? Is that what happens? Uh, I, I don't know, um, but I, I do know they hold court here in the first circuit court building. Right. Uh, and and they do service all islands. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay, so. Um, so there was, a, there was a, an issue that was raised as to whether the Second Circuit Court, you know, Judge Cahill, who was assigned this case, uh, had any, any right to, to, uh, to judge the matter in the first place. And Ar then, on, argu on the argument that it should have gone to the Tax Appeal Court. Right. And, and he was just a Circuit Court judge. Right. And, and he says, I'm taking jurisdiction, man. I'm hearing this now. Well, it's actually the same level of, 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 jurist, of, of court, right? Circuit court judge, tax appeal judge, is a circuit court judge. Isn't it the same thing? It's not the same. Mm. There, there, there are a couple of important differences. One being uh, tax appeal, uh, in tax appeal court, they, they, they only have the power to adjust the assessment. They can't award damages. They can't award attorney's oh, fees. Oh, right. It's just for, what, a refund yeah. of tax you've already paid. Or, 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 you know, uh, what, what is the amount of the deficiency? Yeah. Okay. How, how much more do you have to pay? Okay. So, it, it, right, it's limited. It's not the full jurisdiction of the circuit court. It's like right. a slice of jurisdiction. It's like a slice of jurisdiction. Okay. So the, so the government was then arguing you're in the wrong court. Right. And, uh, and, and of course, our, our, um, our good circuit judge said, well, there, there are some cases where the circuit court actually has taken jurisdiction over tax cases. And you know, cited a couple of cases, uh, and and there were cases, and there were, yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, but but you know, it, it hasn't really been decided yet what the extent of this um, what we call equity jurisdiction mm. is. Mm. So uh, and 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 the judge said, well, screw it. Um, I have, uh, you know, you guys have been in front of me for five years. I'm taking the whole case. Because it's a complex case, there are other issues aside from a straight tax appeal issue. Am I right? Yeah. And uh, so I'm taking it all. Yeah. And I'm going to exercise my full circuit court prerogative on this. Yeah. Right. And and uh, and he says, I, and, and I can award damages. I can award attorneys' fees. And I'm going to do that. That's right. scary for the county of Maui now. Yeah. So 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 <laughs> the county, of course, starts starts sweating bullets. And then and he and he says, furthermore, uh, I am going to declare that those retroactive assessments were invalid. Okay? But people paid those assessments, Tom. Huh? Yeah, so they're going to get their money back. Lots of money. And uh, for each uh, time you had to pay a filing fee to, to get your appeal uh, you know, docketed, you're going to get that back. Uh -huh. And you had to pay a filing fee in tax appeal court, you're going to get that back. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> When you and this raised, is a lot of owners. This is not just a handful of people. There's a lot of people here, yeah. 1,100. Thank you. 1,100 owners. All right. And he says, 
uh, when, you, when you had to special assess your owners to get this $10 million, which you only gave them 30 days to, to do, the special assessment was subject to GET. Wow. So that's and another... And you're going to get that back, too. And you're getting that back, too. Um, My kind of judge. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, and then uh, you know, the, the amount of damages hasn't yet been set, but, but you know, he's setting it up real good. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, we, we know that's what he wants to do. And he says, uh, uh, alternatively or further or whatever it is, um, you, you guys have established a 1983 violation. And I'm going to award damages and I'm going to award attorney's fees. You know, um, we, we, uh, and, and the county says, we're going to appeal. And the judge says, okay, fine, I'll let you appeal. When it comes back to me, then I'll award the damages and attorney's fees. Smart guy. Yeah. So the damages could be, what could the damages be? I mean, if we, we were in that crucible at a later time, post the appeal, um, and, uh, you know, you come representing the taxpayer, and you, what do you ask for in damages? What's, what's possible? You, well, you want to get your fees back? You want to get your, uh, you know, the tax back that you, ha that you wouldn't have had to pay otherwise? Um, How about consequential damages, like um, interest on a loan I had to make to pay this? Uh, that... Probably that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and maybe some punitive damages. I don't no, know. No. I don't know. If, I don't well, know. 83, 1983 allows that. So. Yeah. Even so, against the government. Especially against the government. Especially against the government. <laughs> Show, government should not wander off the path this way. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, w w w the way we look at it, you know, selectively assessing a taxpayer is bad enough. Right. Retribution doesn't really go. This is not the way things work in these United States. That, that's right. <laughs> but uh, but there, are, there are several bases on which to, uh, bases on which to uh, base a 1983 action. And, and, and it's too bad because I, I don't even think uh, that the separate classification is invalid. I, I, uh, you know, I think they had the right to, to make the timeshare classification. Uh, they had the power to do it because they had complete power that was given to them by we the people right. uh, to, to administer property tax and set the classifications. Right. And at the time, um, they were getting 10% of the transient accommodations tax, so the transient accommodations tax treatment was relevant. And, you know, we're not talking about a suspect class of taxpayers here. Uh, you know, we're talking about um, I mean, not, not strict scrutiny, we're talking about rational basis. Does the government have a rational basis to do this? And I think they did. Mm. Okay, so it goes to the Supreme Court from the Circuit Court. Go to the Intermediate Court of Appeals? Or yeah, it's in the Intermediate Court of Appeals. Oh, it's in there now? It's in there now. Has not yet been decided. Right. How, how old is it? I mean, how long has it been there at the ICA? Uh, it went there this year, uh, and we're, we're, we're now waiting for County of Maui to file its opening brief. Oh, of course, the, course the briefing schedule has just, you're in the middle of the briefing schedule. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's, that's just starting. Just starting. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, because the, the, the county of Maui, uh, you know, they were kind of embroiled in a couple other court cases, uh, so they needed an extension to, you know, to just to, to get their um, uh, opening brief in. Yeah, okay. And how long does it take to finish the briefing schedule? Two or three months? Something, something like that, like that yeah. yeah. And, and there could be oral argument here also in the intermediate court. Possibly, yeah. Okay. How much money is at stake in this case? Um, this is, you want to write this down because this is really going to be interesting. He's calculating in his mind how many millions of dollars. Go ahead. Well, between 30 and 40 million. <laughs> this, is, this could hurt the county of Maui. Oh, uh, one, of the, one of the claims that the county of Maui is making is going to be you know, catastrophic for them, Where are they which get I believe. That from? Yeah. They'll have to raise property taxes. <laughs> well, if, if that amount is allowed, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I have some doubt they can get all of that, or that the, um, the time shares can get all of that back. No problem. Give them 30 days. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yeah, yeah but, but, but one, one, one problem uh, is that there's a real you know, tough question about whether uh, the taxes were properly on appeal. Oh, because of the choice of court. 
Yeah. 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 So well, I mean, they they, uh, they they definitely appeal the retroactive assessments. So I think there are, are you know paths to get that back. But when, when we're talking about like um, in 2011, 12, 13, uh, there was no appeal. Uh, at the time, so they may be out of, out of school on that. They may be out of school on that. Now, because, because there's law that says, even if the, the taxes were collected unconstitutionally, if, the, if you don't appeal, you don't get your tax back. Right, you have to follow the rules. You gotta follow the rules. Yeah, uh, that's a problem for the, uh, for the, uh, the taxpayer. So uh, you, you've been filing, uh, you've been filing amicus briefs on this? Well. Or you will file now? I, yeah, I will file soon. Um, uh, obviously, uh, I'd like to see what the county has to say before I, before I do sure. my piece. But, um, you know, but they're, they, they, they now have an extension to like uh, Christmas Eve. And I may file before that. Christmas Eve? Yeah. I mean, some lawyer has to file a brief on Christmas Eve? Well, it's, it's their choice. Okay. They asked for the extension. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. They, they had to move for the extension and they, and they got it. Did they move for the extension to Christmas Eve? That's the date they asked for? Uh, well, it was like around the 24th. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, where does, where does it play that this is going to be a fiscal problem for Maui County? That this is going to hurt Maui County in the fisc? In, the, in its ability to perform its county obligations, its county functions, you know, police, fire, what have you. Um, where does that play in this case? Is that a consideration? Will that be among the arguments made by the county? It's going to make it impossible for us to function. We're going to have to, I don't know, raise taxes or, 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 or clean pots and pans, whatever you have to do. To well, yeah, rate, you know, one, one big problem is um, you have the feds with their with their federal statute saying that if you you know whack somebody's con, you know civil rights, there's got to there's got to be you know compensation right. for and it. That rises above all fiscal considerations, doesn't it? it yeah, that's right, because it's a national concern that 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 people follow the you know respect the constitutional rights of everybody here in this in this nation, mm -hmm. as opposed to what you know you know one one township or what or one county or one city could could think. So given the fact that the there's government involved here, there's the county, um, and, and the amount of money involved here, which is huge for anyone. Um, is this likely to go one way or the other to the Supreme Court of the state? Uh, we don't know yet. I mean, uh, we, we've heard that, uh, that the parties are engaged in settlement talks, even as we speak. So they may find a way to short circuit the problem. Yeah, that would, that would uh, but that would still cost the county of Maui something to pay them off. Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. yeah, and it won't be small. But going back to my uh, my point about this, it, it probably would go to the Supreme Court of the state because the stakes would be high uh, if it weren't settled. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the the question obviously would be, you know, to what extent are other counties, uh, you know, doing the same thing, or uh, are other uh, are there similar it's laws a statewide elsewhere? Statewide issue. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, so far it looks like just a just a county of Maui issue, but. But you know, we, from from our end, uh, figured it was important to, you know, publicize this case and, you know, the, the retribution that went on, to kind of you know be a warning to everybody else to don't you know, don't don't think of pulling anything like this. Right, this is really not cool. Yeah, this is this is bad stuff. It's really bad, you know, to do that to anybody. Um, it's not the way things work in this country, but. Um, you know, what, what, what is your expectation here? What is, oh, one more question about jurisdiction and all that. So it's a federal statute in 1983. Right. Uh, why isn't this in a federal court? Will it be in the federal court? Will it ultimately go into the federal appellate system? Um, no. Wh why don't we have a federal, a federal statute being interpreted by the federal government? No. Well, be, because the case was in state court to begin with. Uh, the, the, the feds say, you know, it's, it's fine for state courts to consider 1983 actions and to award damages, but it's not fine for the state to say, okay, well, you got to go to tax appeal court, they can't award damages, so, so too bad. Yeah, well, 1983 is really not a claim in the state, and uh, the tax appeal court. Right. It's not the right place. It's, yeah, it's so, really so, so, general so, jurisdiction. But what I, what I think, you know, should be the right answer is, uh, is that the Second Circuit Court of Maui keeps the case because they got this 1983 claim, it's a very good claim, 
and they've been working with this this case for five years, so they may as well take, you know, uh, deal with all of it. Yeah. So you file your briefs. The court may have argument in the intermediate court right here down the block. Right. Um, when is this going to get resolved? If assuming no settlement in the interim. Right. Assuming no settlement, we're looking at maybe a year down the pike. Mm. Okay. We want to cover it with you, Tom. And if there's any other cases, we want to cover them, too. <laughs> we want to get educated on what's going on with taxes in Hawaii. It's your middle name, after all. <laughs> I guess so. Tom Yamachika. Thank you, Jay. President of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Thanks so much. Aloha.